Hello, my name is Nate Geyer. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick uh, overview of my last 10 months. Uh, it's been a, a very wild ride, but uh, how I came to go to DevCon and win the uh, Status Hackathon with an NFT creation and distribution tool connecting to uh, traditional bank accounts. So if someone goes in to uh, Starbucks, I can record those transactions and we can automatically allocate NFTs based on user transactions if they hit a certain threshold in the price. So I didn't just come up with the idea immediately. Um, it's been a long 10 months trying to figure out what to do. I've been in the crypto space for a very, I'm also a big wave surfer. This is me uh, dropping in on a massive wave in Uluwatu in August. So what I basically did is uh, I quit my job uh, in March. Um, my background is I worked with Nike. I pushed them to rewrite uh, Nike ID, which is this guy. Oh, there it goes. So I pushed them to rewrite their entire application. It's a million dollar a day application into React and Redux because their first application was all done in jQuery. It was just impossible to manage. Um, with that success, I ended up joining, I was infatuated with the, uh, the crypto landscape since 2014. Um, so I wanted to dip my toe into the financial world. So my mentor who uh, ran a uh, gift card company, sold it for over 55 mil, uh, ended up hiring me as his first uh, hire. And we create, and he created this company called Bumped, and we uh, that allowed me to start playing with actual uh, clearing firms. So Bumped's main proposition was swipe your card at Starbucks, and we'll give you fractional shares of publicly traded stock. So go to Starbucks, get a coffee, we'll give you 0 0.0021 shares of publicly traded stock as a reward. So the idea is, if you have ownership in a company, you go and purchase more things there. And I got to play with all the things, everything, like uh, clearing firms with uh, bank accounts. With I got to see how the current financial system is glued together. It's a giant mess. Um, the way clearing firms work is, is is a whole process, but I'll keep that. So um, I quit my job, put everything in storage uh, when cryptocurrency went to the roof. Uh, I've been going to and speaking at and just trying to get my hands around all of the, uh, the blockchain communities that I can get a hold of. Uh, going to Sumatra and Bali, uh, Bangkok, and um, Chiang Mai is actually a really fascinating blockchain community up in Chiang Mai, which is like Northern Thailand. Uh, just a lot of people, expats are just basically huddling down and building fascinating things. Um, and their money is going a lot further. So I flew back here to go to Prague. I uh, went to DEF CON 4. Um, that was a, a my first hackathon actually. And I, if any of you haven't done a hackathon, just do it, just figure it out and, and go. I, I met so many friends. My whole DevCon experience would not have been the same if I didn't go to the hackathon because the people you meet, you bond with at four in the morning while you're still coding, it's a, a phenomenal experience. Uh, yeah, I went to Budapest and now I'm living in Berlin for a little bit, um, but eventually I think I want to live in Lisbon because there's massive waves there and it uh, has everything I want. There's actually a fascinating blockchain community there as well. Um, so here's like the overview. So I don't know if you've heard of Epicenter of Bitcoin. Uh, I've been infatuated with their podcast from like way back in the day. Uh, I remember they started talking about uh, the Ether way back when Ethereum just did its uh, launch of ICO. So I started getting super fascinated and interested. Uh, this is my time of just like reading all the articles, but never programming, never touching the Ethereum network. And then, uh, of course, you put your job right there. Um, and basically, it's been a nice long downturn. But the, the beauty is that during this time, I was reading articles and I thought I knew what the hell I was doing. When I actually started jumping in here, Crypto Zombies was my first like touch. Then I started messing around with Get, and I realized that's really, really up and hard. So I started uh, dealing with Truffle, which was a nice opening to, if you're not familiar with Truffle, it's a way for you to spin up your own blockchain. Oh, I'll show that later. Um, EOS, I dipped into that for just a little bit just to see how it would work, and then I realized that the whole governance experiment is going to be a giant failure because of all the things that I'm sure you're aware of. We can, that could be a whole other talk. Um, Dai, uh, jumping into that platform really taught me a lot. I'll show you in a minute. Uh, then got into Open Zeppelin and Plasma. So about this time is when DevCon 4 appeared. And so I was able to create all these different projects over time and fail miserably at like probably 30 different projects. 
Um, so yeah, it's time to get focused. Uh, you can't just be running around the world like a crazy man. So uh, I ended up uh, hitting my head and I had a water, I broke an eardrum. So I had to go to Thailand and get away from the ocean for a little bit. And that's where I discovered Dyn, started playing around with their platform. Um, uh, at the time, transactions were around 475. Um, so I don't know if you're familiar with the Dyn platform, but literally every time you have to press a button, you're making a transaction. So in order to just get out a little bit of die just for funsies, you're, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, you're at $40 just for like turning your system on. That was a big eye opener for me and I realized, oof, you can't just build stuff. And, and uh, the first thing I built was like a, what was it? It was a, I don't even have it up here. Yeah, so I built a lot of projects. These are all just stupid little things. They're just fun. Like I wanna learn Swarm. I would go in and build a project, learn Swarm enough, and then back off. And then I would go, okay, predict, ETH predict. Uh, on Reddit, someone was like, if Ether hits a, a thousand, you know, if someone gets the right right price, like maybe maybe it, it'll release some funds. So I'm like, cool, all right, it's my contract about that. And lock in the funds and realize that's a whole, whole, like, I don't know, have any of you like started on a project and went down the rabbit hole and realized it's just miserably impossible? Because you're just like, well, there's a problem. Uh, how are you going to validate, you know, who's an actual user? How, spamming the network, like you can't just. Anyways, um, so uh, the big question was at that point, um, what to put into the cloud and the current infrastructure that we have, the Web 2.0 world, and what to decentralize, right? That's that's a, a fairly big question. When am I going to one? What? What time do I end? Uh, 115. 115, cool. So, uh, DEF CON 4 happened and I just won. Uh, the, the, I did not expect to win, but it was just awesome. I got to like do my demo on the, on the main stage and I was tired, I don't think I slept in like four days. Um, but it was a really neat experience because the um, uh, everybody who was interesting in the, in the blockchain space was there to me because they had, um, the ETH Magicians was directly before, them. and so Vitalik and Vlad and all those humans were all on the stage. They were all in the, the audience, and I got to go and actually do the live demo, and I don't think I was prepared, the thing actually worked uh, on the stage, so it was a good situation. Uh, thank you, Status, if you're in here. No. There are another room. Got it, so I'm gonna do the demo of what I actually built, and I think I'm gonna actually build this into an actual company, and so this is good to, to show this off. So this is basically the entire tech stack, um, I didn't just go there and just build the thing. It was, uh, you know, months and months and months of playing with different things and then uh, the accumulation of uh, doing it. So Firebase is, uh, if you're not familiar with that, it's, it's holding uh, bits of information. Node is running, uh, I'm using Node in two spots to interact with the Plaid API to actually communicate with big transactions. Um, I can go back to this so it makes more sense later after you see it. But Plaid is a really fascinating, um, uh, let's see if I can show that off. So here's Plaid. You get uh, all the products, you get transactions off, you sign in with, their, with your um, bank account. Um, and what I'm using right now is just this transaction endpoint and to just show exactly what that is. So like they actually have, so this is Plaid as well. Um, let's say, let's change the color of this to, I don't know, a dark one. So I'm gonna publish the changes. This is all still Plaid. So if we go into my application called All The Things, so I refresh, I open up the link, you can see it's nice and dark in the background. This is my actual application. So I don't touch this, this is all Plaid's handling. I just get a unique token um, from Plaid and then that gives me all, all the transactions. So let's see where I'm at. So going back to here, I'm using Truffle uh, and Ganache. Ganache is a really neat, um, little micro blockchain so that you, it gives you all these different little account balances and some fake ETH to play around with and so you're actually, it's hyper fast. Um, using uh, IPFS, uh, it's a distributed storage system. That's where all my images are going to. Um, so I don't know if you're, yep. So Open Zeppelin is, the, is a prepackaged library that has a standard 721 or non-fungible token and ERC20s where they have all the different fo functions written out. It's tested to hell and back. It's been battle, battle, battle tested. 
I don't want to write all that. I, I just like writing like very small little custom functions and relying on Open Zeppelin to to do all that. Has anyone played with Open Zeppelin here? So I should slow down a little bit. <laughs> then Open Zeppelin. Um, so they the 721. Uh, do you guys know what a 721 is? So all it is is a markdown file. Like if you think about it, a 721, ERC20, all of that literally is just a markdown file. It's a set of rules and guidelines. It's a thing that says you need to have these functions. Um, you need to have a send to. You need to have a uh, get balance of my contract. That's literally all it is when you when you boil it down. Um, Open Zeppelin, they have all those functions. It's been approved. The community has approved it. So um, that's what we have. Uh, I'm using React and Redux and Web uh, Web three uh, to interact. Question. Yes. Uh, if, if we have those uh, functions in those standards, then why do we need Open Zeppelin? So they have some extra. They wrote that. So yeah. they, they here's the standards that says you should have these. Open Zeppelin wrote them, and now I can use Open Zeppelin to say, "Cool, they wrote the hard part, and I just need to interact, and I can I can just create one simple um, smart contract that imports Open Zeppelin." Open Zeppelin has all sorts of great stuff. They have the is ownable. Um, so like the, 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 the verification of whether or not I'm the right human to be interacting and minting coins, I don't wanna write that stuff right now. Like I want another verified system to be able to go and, and do all that. They've written, it's a pretty heavy library. There's a lot of stuff going on. And so they have functions that are actually outside of some ERC uh, standards? Uh, no, Yes-ish, yeah. They, they tack on extra functions, like the is ownable is, is a function that you can, that it calls within itself. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and I highly suggest jumping. I actually don't have that up, but. Okay, on time, it's doing good. So, let's go into what this app actually looks like. So, if someone comes into my app, they uh, link their card. Continue, you can check uh, your, your bank account. You put in your bank account's user ID and password. If you guys have seen this before, Coinbase uses the exact same thing. Uh, same with Thanks, right? But a lot of them are starting to like lean on these guys to, to start interacting. Um, let's say, so I've already connected. So let's say we've gone in. You can actually see all of my transactions. So there's a lot of Berlin stuff. Uh, there's even webhooks. So I can, what I really want to do on stage and here, but I'm not gonna spend anything here, is actually go to like Amazon and like purchase a thing and you'll be able to see like an actual transaction pop up, hopefully like right on the actual swipe. But you get a ton of data. Um, this is just a, a very small piece. So like here's the what it actually looks like. When I'm spending in the States, I think you get a lot more data. But let's see, can we even see that? But yeah, um, let's see, you get a category. Was it a food and drink restaurant? What was the date, um, the currency code? And eventually you end up getting the actual uh, latitude and longitude of the store locations. So uh, why do you get much more data in the US? Because it's, it depends on the bank to implement the feature. I'm not exactly sure. Um, I just know I get more data when I'm in the U.S. I think it's uh, a lot of these banks are very U.S. U.S. banks, yeah. Yeah. Let's see if you go in here. That's yeah. That's my guess. Okay. So, um, so the the main idea is let's say we have all of these stores. Uh, Ryanair. Uh, we've got Magneto Cafe, which is in uh, Budapest. Um, so the main idea is allowing anybody within the system to just create their own tokens. So if we wanted to come in here, we'll load up an image from, uh, let's say, what would Ryanair give us? Uh, maybe a free surf lesson when you land somewhere in Portugal. Uh, let's say, surf. So if someone spends, uh, let's say, I don't know how much I spent. I think if someone spends $30, I think in reality it would be more like $700 at Ryanair over the, the last few months. Uh, let's mint um, three of these tokens. So if we go here, opens up our MetaMask, we confirm. So there we go, now I have, these are now all 721 uh, tokens that I've created and minted. 
Um, so the idea is, if I go into my custodian, so now these have appeared. I've spent enough at Ryanair personally, it went through all my transactions, uh, because here we can see I've spent over $92 in the last month at, at Ryanair. Uh, Magneto Cafe, I've spent 30, and you can see things that I haven't spent uh, a certain amount on. Let's say, let's see, I haven't achieved, achieved the uh, trip to the mental wines. Uh, it's $3,000. So that's why in the uh, custodian piece, it doesn't actually show. So the idea is, it, so the main goal of why I think this might be actually have legs uh, in the future is and why I built so many projects and realized that they were all just crap ideas because of either transaction fees or uh, knowledge. I think the, the biggest one of this that it kind of leaps a little bit is non-technical users getting involved in the space. That's kind of like the huge, how do we deal with that, right? So the goal of this is that end users at the end of the day will be able to just get tokens. They would have a wallet and then they would just see um, these 721s just populating. And they're open standard on layer one so that they can just be traded on any exchange. So the idea is uh, assets backed by whoever creates them and, and verifying that they've created it. So it could be something as simple as like a free coffee at Magneto Cafe, you can go in there and exchange it. And there's uh, other standards out there where you can actually have the, uh, the custodian pay for the gas to actually pull it in. So let's see if this thing actually works. Uh, let's go into uh, Brave. So right now I'm in Chrome. Uh, if we go to Brave, now we sign into uh, Okay, I think that's signed into a thing. Nope. Okay, so here is that account. Let's go into a customer account. So now I'm going to go into localhost, not that one. Okay, so two different accounts. My things here, I have no things. Uh, my things here, I have all the things. So these things have not been distributed, are, are not gonna be distributed. These things are ready to be deployed to our, our customer and link their, their bank account. Let's go into the store. Nope, custodian. Let's airdrop. All right, so hopefully if I press refresh, yeah, we got things. <laughs> so now I have these things and they're just open 721 layer one uh, tokens that I can exchange to my friends or, or burn them when I actually go to a place. So the, I think the neat idea of this is just like an asset back by whoever creates them. Like they only have value if you if you believe that it has value, right? So if your local cafe, it's like, oh, there's my local cafe, um, I can go in and burn burn the item. And so it's, I don't know, it's kind of a, a neat, neat concept. So, sorry, so it's a front-end token mentor that has a basically bank account attached to it. Yep. So the, the bank account, yep, it's, uh, I don't know, have you been here the whole time? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so it's just basically, you link your traditional uh, bank account and yeah, it sees all of your transactions. And so whoever creates them, they're the ones that are gonna have to be technically savvy a little bit. They're gonna have to understand MetaMask, they're gonna have to understand how to um, basically put Ether into MetaMask and then mint tokens, and they're gonna be paying for the allocation of it. So the, the goal of this product is that once they mint the token, they've, I've done my job. I'm gonna take a small fee from every mint, and then once they're out in the world, I don't care what happens with it or where it goes. So this view inside of Chrome is kind of two users at the same time? Yeah, so right now we're, we're MetaMask into our boy uh, 212 custodian. But it's also logged into your Plaid account as the it's, customer, right? Well, the, the, the customer is, yeah, it's, it's basically faking what it would look like because I don't want to sign in with 100 users connecting to the flag. But yeah, at the end of the day, I would just have that uh, security token just related to this user on this side, but for easiness of the, of the demo. Yep. Yep. So let's see.
Yeah, that's about that. So I have a question. How yeah. did you link the credit card with, uh, with your platform? So what, what kind of credit card data do you uh, collect? That's done within um, this uh, link card. So we go into, so this is uh, the Plaid Link API. It's uh, just a React uh, component that hooks into Plaid. Um, once you go into Plaid, you can just like uh, Google Auth or any of that. You can uh, you plug in your whatever bank account you have, your user ID and your password, and then. Of my banking account? Yep. And that's, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna be an easy home, but it's. Uh, uh, how do you protect it? Uh, I don't touch the username and password, so I don't get any of that. It's uh, protected by Plaid. So it's the same theory as Coinbase. Coinbase, you go in and if you want to link your credit system okay. to actually do the ACH transfer of the money into your account, then yeah, that's what you would do. Where do you see potential applications of this? Where do I see potential applications of this? Um, that's the fun part, just kind of releasing it and seeing what happens. So I'm still in the process of finalizing what, what the hell to do with it. Um, winning DevCon was like a good first stage, and then the next stage is just seeing the viability of the cost of the transactions and the creation and just seeing if the tech works. So I've been just, everything you've seen here, like visuals, I, I built most of that in just two days. The rest of it, the last month or two, has just been re, re, reworking the back end and just testing things. Yeah. Um. A lot of this system could work without a blockchain. I think what becomes really interesting is that these kind of coupons that are for different organizations, I mean, customer loyalty points and things like that mm -hmm. already exist. But what do you think it'll look like having sort of um, an open access for buying and selling, like um, basically coupons? I mean, do you think that is, what becomes enabled, or what do you see sure. opening the door for? Yeah, it could be uh, coupons, it could be a ticket to a party, it could be a ticket, who knows, it's a thing. It's a thing that someone creates and that whoever gets it, it just believes that that thing was created by someone that they trust and that it can actually be redeemed as a thing. I mean, this would also say you could use a surplus and as collateral for a loan. Sure. it's redeemable inside this. I mean, liquidity is going to get real freaking weird over the, the years, right? You're going to be able to basically say, okay, um, I will take, you know, that little bit of property for 15 surf lessons, three coffees, and, you know, 24 US dollars. And then you just bundle all that together. You need your, so, yeah, I think the exciting part of this is, is more of, I have no freaking clue what I'm doing. And I'm just slowly going in a direction and feeling that this is the, this is the best direction I've got so far. Yeah. Any more questions? Um, so if a company has more uh, um, bank accounts, like they have many of, of the, um, let's say I buy, buy coffees in, in a coffee shop, uh, how does that uh, trigger? Like, because the, the, the transaction doesn't go directly to the company, like it, it, that same second, it doesn't go to the bank account of the company. It right? would, yeah, oh no, no, so the, the, the bank account system is just the distributor. So at the end of the day, just like a punch card, the asset is just, a, it's just an item. So you would go, you would burn it at the coffee shop. They would have the app as well. You'd burn the, the token, that person would then give you the coffee. Actually, it, it, it works when I pay with credit card, right? When I pay with card, then, the, the information is linked and uh, the token can be minted because the play is connected to a uh, seller's bank account, right? Yep. Okay. Do you have some uh, estimated uh, release date for application? I, I'm, gonna, I'm thinking of joining the accelerator program uh, with Consensus. Okay. So I'm gonna submit an application with them and then go through more cycles, but this thing is gonna be a thing, and I'm pretty, the more I think about all the things, it just, it'll be fun. But it is a hard space. Like we're, we're like, right now, I think customer applications are a really tough sell. Anything to do with a non-technical user that needs that thing within a certain amount of time is just a, it's a really hard market. If I had my way, I'd be just building uh, internal cash management systems right now, because I think that kind of application for what we have today is perfect. You don't need that much time. Allow your developers within a large corporation to move cash around just like a, you know, a, a username. That's really neat. Um, I think why I'm, I think now's the time to start playing with things 
is I think obviously 10 years ago to start a company was way too early. Um, I think now it's still we're in that awkward phase of like, we kind of want to do stuff on it, but and it's kind of mature enough to start doing stuff. I think now's the time to start doing stuff and then failing and figuring out, you know, because you can't just, your first blockchain application isn't going to be the winner. I remember uh, at our financial, um, at our broker dealer, people were trying to come up with these great ideas about X, Y, and Z. I'm like, has anyone ever even played with any of this stuff? Because literally, just like what I was saying, I thought I knew a lot about blockchain here. It wasn't until I started diving into all this stuff that I realized, oh crap. <laughs> yeah. I need to know about, yeah. You just, it's a nice view of when people see it. Yeah. Um, I'm learning every day. Something, something else comes out. I'm like, well, I couldn't have done that four days ago. And now stable coins are coming out. Like We can do all sorts of fun stuff. So I, that's why I really, truly believe now is the time to start building and failing and building and failing. Not two years ago, I think today's, today's the day. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend, uh, like if, if some of us are uh, beginners, mm -hmm. would you recommend us going to hackathons? Did it like pay off for you or? Absolutely. You... Well, it totally paid off. I got five grand, which uh, then eventually bumped up to 5,600 and then I cashed out and I crashed like a mofo, so <laughs> I, think I, <laughs> I think I cashed out like, I got it and then I got up here and then I cashed out. I was like, yeah. Well, maybe I should have done that. Oh, yep, glad I did that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's stressful because you, you know, you have to meet people. We're developers, not a lot of us have like the social skills of like the, you know. But to be able to just go, hey, let me join your, your weird thing idea, and maybe you have all those insecurities of like, am I a good enough developer to even like join a thing? I was bad though. I'm sorry. I I went in. I didn't think I was gonna have stick it around for the next day, and so I ended up going alone. And, and it went alone. So I got to keep all the money. That's cool, but I ended up meeting a lot of people because you're there at four in the morning and other people are there at four in the morning and you have those like moments of like, oh God, I'm dying, you know? And the, I wouldn't have had the same DEF CON experience. Cause I, I know we can all go to conferences and just do our own thing. It's a lot easier to go into the background and put your headphones on. Um, but yeah, it's a, it was good to, to break all of that. Would you give some tips? How to win a hackathon? How to win a hackathon? Yeah, spend like 10 months figuring out a bunch of crazy stuff and then put it all together in the last Before minute. the hackathon and then just come there and, and like pretend you're building it? No, I, I had zero of the actual, well, I, I had a, a good template, a React template with Redux already set up. If you're going to a hackathon, have that stuff set up. Like have, have uh, whatever you're comfortable with. I mean, and if you're gonna want to, like a lot of these hackathons, they have a thing where they say, you know, you have to use this new technology. Just make that new technology the one thing you learn. Like if you have two technologies that you're trying to learn, you're gonna spend the whole time trying to get a hello world, like up, up and running. So go there with like, if you know React or Redux or something like that, have that template sorted or view or whatever it is you have. Cause then, and you even have like a styled template, you know, or like your own, yeah. Even though your group might not even use it, but yeah, it was, it was a good one. Yeah. Any more questions? Okay, I think that's it. Thank you.